Hello. Yeah, and today we'll continue with rain check. So we ended day three with well getting shot and Theodore was very distraught about it and he felt guilty about well being shot like he was the reason well was shot and it seemed like in his final words well did not regret doing what he did that he really enjoyed his career even it meant him dying so that's how day three ended and now we're going to start a new day which well, turns out to be day six because at the end of day three it skipped to day four then to day five and then it stopped at day six so I'm going to assume that Theodore was in the hospital for the past couple of days because he was also shot. He was shot in the leg, I believe. And he was bleeding also, like Roe. So, let's go to the case report. I gotta read everything here on the sky. Let's get to day three. Theodore said something about helping David again. I don't remember. Theodore joined the team. I can't remember. We were at Javier's place. That's all I remember. I don't remember ever going to the library. Day four with Dad did. Day five with Dad did. Okay, so. And so like day three is basically him saying I don't remember hmm. and then day four and five are redacted go ahead and start day six Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to move my legs when my body protests, refusing to budge. All at once, I dull, blistering pain radiates inside me, jolting me from my slumber. Feels like my body was shattered and poorly, and poorly put back together again. A long dull pressure lingers on my eyes as I try to take in the surroundings. Some kind of hospital room. There's a bag and some stuff in the corner of the room. Clearly someone else has been here before. This is what happened to me. 
trying to move my arms. I was having pain, a pain shoot through my sides. Shit. A low groan escapes my mouth, and that's when my eyes began to wander down to my body. I looked and feel like a fucking mess. I don't know how I'm alive. There are bandages all over my chest, practically suffocating me as I try to breathe, and IVs and wires all over, all around my body. God. Why can't I remember? My breathing begins to quicken as I struggle to recall anything. I was. There was, I mean, how could I have been? Countless reasons flood my mind. But none of them stick. Did I lose a fight? Did I get into an accident? Where do I live? What's my name? That's obvious, it's. My name is. My eyes frantically dart across the room, hoping to find anything that could give me a hint. Pain of storms have set in, and I can feel my paws begin to feel clammy, sweat forming at my brows. I'm. Fucking hell, what the hell is making that goddamn noise? I glad they've been sitting next to me. The incessant beeping grating my nerves, taunting me with, with the weedings on the screen. What the hell? All the sounds around me suddenly become magnified with a long drone rigging through my head. <sighs> Fucking hell, I need to calm down. I need to find someone to. I need to find someone for answers. I'll get nowhere like this. I try to call out for help, but it's excruciatingly painful to speak. A sudden surge of intense pain courses through my chest with a faint taste of blood in my mouth. Just how badly am I injured? I soon have tried to speak. I practically choke as I try to subdue a, a cough, specks of blood scattering across the bed. I frantically gasp for air as I look on the other side of the bed and notice all the, all the machinery. My eyes widen as I realize the severity of the situation. Even more tubes and wires seem to loop around my back and around the bed. Fuck, this is serious, huh? One thing at a time. I lay as still as I possibly can, trying to regain my strength. After what feels like forever, the discomfort finally subsides enough where I'm able to catch my breath and hear my thoughts. Alright. How did I get here? Who am I? What's my fucking name? I grind my teeth annoyed that I can't even answer a simple question like that. The more I try to recall, the farther it gets. Like I've woken from a long ass sleep, the dream slowly fading. Fuck this. I was just waiting for a doctor to check in on me. Hopefully I'll be able to get some answers then, and a proper prognosis too. I'll go set my stuff and rest up for now. Perfect timing looks like I didn't have to wait long. A stocky looking tiger enters the room but stops when he notices me. Just about how he's reacting, I don't think he's suspecting me to be awake. Who the hell is this guy, though? Definitely not a doctor with the way he with the way they're dressed. Whoa. Well, is this guy talking about me? His voice is coarse and raspy. Wonder what the hell happened to him. Oh my god, well, you're away. The doctors, they had no idea how long you'd be asleep for. He walks over to my bedside and crosses next to me. You're awake. You really awake. Thank god. I thought I'd never see you again. He puts his head into his sleeve as his eyes start to water. Just who is this guy? Considering the situation, he must be incredibly important if he's getting this emotional over me. I better, better go along with it for now and ask questions later. They said you weren't going to make it. And if you did, they said it could take weeks, even months for you to wake up. I will turn a small smile as I try and study the tiger, noted the unusual marking on his face. How are you feeling? I hope you're not in too much pain. I, I try to speak, but it proves too difficult. I only managed to utter a single word before running out of breath. Please, it's okay. Don't push yourself. Does it hurt to talk? It's best that you don't. The doctor did mention something about lungs. He looks back at the tiger, his eyes pain. 
He extends his paw, gently gripping mine as he continues to stare at me with concern. It's been a couple of days since the shooting. His eyes glaze and averts his gaze with me. You must be wondering what happened since then. Shooting, I think I'm starting to form a picture of what happened, maybe. I use most of my strength and squeeze his paw, trying to get his attention back. Sorry, I got distracted. What is it? I got his attention with my eyes with the pen and paper across the room, which I had spotted. All right, the good thinking. If it's not too difficult for you, maybe you could write down your thoughts instead. He gets up, grabs the items, and places the pen in my palm. With a weak grip, I grapple with the pen on the soft, bl- on the soft bedding, but eventually succeed in jotting something down. As suspected, the tiger becomes increasingly worried as he studies the paper. Who are you? What do you... He gives out a nervous chuckle, but frowns as he studies my serious expression. You serious? You don't remember? But, oh God. Uh, whoa. Does that ring a bell? Is your name? I'm Theodore. You ran into me earlier this week, remember? We met in the Grand Marine. You were asking about Cyprus. Remember? What about my wallet? Without you to return it to me, I don't know if I still have it now. I guess you can't remember that either, right? I found that. Okay, well, what about Ark? You have to remember that. You told me yourself you've been working there for years now. I'm an investigator working there. You told me yourself, and you even gave me this. The tiger rummages through his pockets and pulls out a black business card, his motions becoming more frantic. Look, this is yours. I stare down and see the words arc and row wither across it. I look back and see his eyes pleading at me, hoping any of this is working to jog my memory. But it's not. You were in the middle of an investigation when I met you. I got attacked in a casino by some addict, but you were there to explain it all to me. You don't remember? And there was Javier too, your investigation partner. You work with him on cases. He's a fox much shorter than you. He's smart and helpful in it. He shakes his head in disbelief. Nothing, huh? Please, whoa. You have to remember something, right? N- nothing at all? I'm sorry. You're trying so hard. It's frustrating. It's frustrating me more and more. He turns his back away from me and I see his shoulders deflate from the feet. Huh. He scars his paw, wiping his face as he stares at the wall. His words are a whisper, but I'm barely able to make it out over the noise of the machines. It's not fair. I, I robbed you of your health, and I robbed you of your memories. Why do you have to say someone like me? Why? His words taper off into a low whimper, and in the ensuing moments, time stands still. Why do you have to say someone like me? How impressible. I'm not sure what I'm exactly feeling right now, pity, regret, anger, but I do know one thing and it's that I'm responsible for this tiger saw. Sorry. The single whisper drains most of my strength, leaving me winded again, but it's loud enough to catch the tiger's attention. No, don't be. He suddenly reaches out and grabs my paw, staring at me with resolve. Well, you probably won't remember, but that night, you saved me. I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about it, about what I'd do if you never woke up. How'd I never be able to thank you? But thankfully you're awake, and it's clear to me now. He squeezes tightly to the point where it's almost painful. I'm going to figure out who did this to you. I promise you will, if it's the last thing I do. I. Right. Sorry, can you give me a moment? He steps out the room, leaving me to dwell on my thoughts. Was he so important that I felt the need to protect him with my life? I can't verify what he's saying, but my gut says he's telling the truth. 
Why would I risk my life for him if he wasn't important to me? Who was he to me? The real question is, who was I to him? I need to learn more about my situation as soon as I can. I need to remember. I struggle to keep my eyes open and laid back, giving myself a well-needed break. Fucking hell, I'm so tired. Seconds turn to minutes and I slowly feel myself drift in and out of consciousness. An eternity could pass and I wouldn't even know it. Suddenly, a vague but comforting sensation like a power resting on my shoulder emerges and then gradually fades away. I must be exhausted. You must be exhausted. Please get some rest. I'll go and get you something to eat. You must be starving. I'll be back. Theodore? He's gone, said. I still have more to ask. I look around the room with my attention landing on the machine by my bedside again. This thing earlier that was beeping, is this an ECG? Everything looks stable, normal peaks, cyclic patterns. Wait, how did I know all this? I furl my brows and I, and a sudden sharp sting of clarity permeates through me. Fragmented memories of my past suddenly become clear. I went to medical school years ago. I know how this all works. But an investigation firm? How? I never cared about shit like that. Wait, medical school. There was someone. Declan? Why does that name sound so familiar? A distinct image of a tiger vaguely resembling Theodore flashes into my mind. The harder I try to focus on it, the more it dissipates the nothingness. Good morning, Theodore. I'm back. You won't believe why I just bought this new phone from. Hey, you awake. Yo, where's Theodore? I shoot a look over at the obnoxiously loud boar. Does he also know that tiger? Are we all friends? What the hell happened to him? The don't look at me like that, it's scary. He slowly approaches my bedside and waves a paw in front of me. Hey man, you feel okay? Do you need me to like get you the doctor? Not in the mood to talk, huh? That's okay. Not in the fucking mood to deal with this right now. He notices the pen and paper on my bed, looking back at me with looking back at me like he finally understands. Who are you? Oh man, I'm not that forgetful, am I? I'm Monty, with an eye. Remember, you guys saved me at the power plant. And then you guys came to visit me at the hospital. I totally thought I was gonna get kidnapped the worst sight. What exactly happened at the power plant? Is this related to that, to what Theodore told me? Maybe he'll be smart enough to take the hint and leave and leave if I ignore him. Yo, are you okay? A small tap on my shoulder causing me to bear my fangs in response. Oh wait, <laughs> you're just sleeping. That's okay, take it easy, you're still recovering. You know, dude, I'm glad you woke up. I was starting to worry that you never, that you never would. Kinda spooky. You know what's crazy? Theo said he lost so much blood, the doctors thought you were like a garden. He's been by your bedside almost the entire time. He hasn't been eating much either, now that I think about it. But it's okay. He says you're important to him. I was bad that. I wish I had someone like that. Then I wouldn't be so lonely. <laughs> Something really bad must have happened to you guys, huh? Theo wouldn't tell me, but he was using a crutch just like just until last night. I don't know if it was, but uh, I'm glad you two are okay. I uh, also remember more about the other day, but I didn't tell Theo yet. He didn't look like he was in the mood to talk about anything other than you. The other day, I can tell you if you're interested, it's like a small detail. I remember when I was at the power plant. It's too much. I feel like I'm going to crash at any second from exhaustion trying to piece things together. That's fine too, dude. I can totally tell you later. No need to glare at me like that, though. 
finally some peace and quiet. And hey, speak of what you don't happen to know where he went, right? He sighs as I continue to glare at him. Boo. Well, I guess I'll wait for him to come back. Selfie. Hey, you want to hear a funny story while we wait? No. You know, like recently, there was this cool thing I saw when I went swimming. I rolled my eyes and let out a painful groan as I realized there's no way of shaking this guy off me. Just in me. Man, I thought I was getting better at this, but I'm still not used to the hospital vibes. I forced that thought aside, trying to think through Rose's situation instead. I'm glad that he's awake, but if he's uh, if he has some kind of amnesia, then what does this mean? What happens next? I hope it's nothing serious. Maybe some food will do him some good. As I slowly navigate my usual path toward the food court, my pace tempered by my recovering wound, I can't help but notice the closed doors ahead of me. Ah, uh, this lot. Did something happen? Peering through the opening, I spot a group of nurses and doctors on the other side, frantically pushing someone into a room. Looks like I'm taking a detour. I think there's another food court on the fifth floor that should be closed. Thankfully, it doesn't take me long to find the other set of elevators. Eventually, I'm able to get my bearings and locate the other food court after wandering the halls for a good 10 minutes. Now what to get? Crap myself asked what kind of stuff we we'll like to eat, but then again, he probably wouldn't have a memory anyway. Maybe I'll line up by that sandwich shop over there. Can't go wrong with those if it's as busy as it looks. As I joined the line, I naturally reached into my pocket for my phone, but remember, I had smashed it into pieces from nights ago. Feels so weird not to have my phone around. I know I'm on vacation, so I hope no one has been looking for me. Especially since I'm nowhere near the tech convention at this point. The line's long, but it moves quickly as soon as I, as soon as it's my turn. I glance at the menu, there at a cashier of small mouse behind the counter who's barely able to keep up with the rest. Hi, how can I help you? I'm still unsure of what the best thing to order. Hi, can I get a... Uh... Why are there so many choices? Rose's not a picky eater, right? He didn't seem like one before. Do people with amnesia like the same foods as before? Uh, why is my brain freezing up at a time like this? Hey, buddy. I turn around to see a hostile looking tiger glaring at me. Clearly pissed. We don't guts all day. Pick something already. Someone's guts places to go. Just pick something and go. Why? Sorry about that. Painting a face badge to the cashier who, who seems on face. Yes, they use this kind of stuff. Which one would you recommend? What's the most popular on the menu? That would be the number eight, sir. So, sure, I'll take two of those. Trying not to waste any more time. I take out my car ahead of time. Sorry, sir. The, F the NFC and our machine broke earlier. We only accept cash. Cash? Who even uses that these days? I think I still have enough to pay. Uh, oh, okay, no problem. I'll just pay with cash and I dig through my wallet but realize I'm a, a couple of dollars short. It's just my luck. Hey, what's the hold up now? I. That was rhetorical. You today can barely look after themselves. Alright, forget it, little tiger boy. Step aside, I'm at a loss. He wrestles himself between me and the counter, slamming down several bills. Hey, Mousy, help this poor kid with his food and a black coffee with me, Pronto. I got some places to be. But thanks. Yeah, yeah. And keep the change, too, if he wants it. You look like you need it more than me, ha! Huh? He weighs apart me dismissively, quickly grabbing his coffee and leaving without another word. What the hell was that? My food eventually arrives, and as I attempt 
to navigate my way back. I, I'm still hung up with that, what just happened. What an asshole. At least there wasn't anybody else around to see how fussed I was. As I try and shake their bells my way, I notice several nurses maneuvering stretchers across the hall as I turn the corner. The hospital is a lot more after the day, and I'm not sure that's a good vibe. Was there any, was there an accident or something? Since I'm about to make my way to the elevators, a tall canine nurse strides up and closes the doors along the hallway before me. Sorry, this section is now closed. Please take the side hall around. Huh? Is everything okay? They don't hear my questions. They are too preoccupied handling tasks while reading something off a clipboard. This looks serious. Best not to get involved. After all that, I'm finally back on back on Rose floor. I swear to God, this hospital's layout is like a maze, and it doesn't help my discomfort for them. My mind slowly dwells back to that night, and my stomach starts to wrench as I'm unable to forget the horrid sounds of the gunfire. I like to say I'm over it, and it also helps that Rose awake, but that night was insane. There's so many questions I want answered. But I guess I have to take things one at a time. I take a deep breath as I finally see Rose's room number down the hall. I open the door and carefully, as carefully as possible, trying not to wake Rose up in case he's still asleep. Hey, well, I'm back, huh? A smart Matai sitting at the back of the room, his head perking up from his phone as, as I enter with Rose in the bed missing. Hey, Theodore. You're back. I didn't even hear you enter. I was waiting here for you, dude. Wanted to talk to you about something. Huh? Where did Roe go? Oh, you know. How it is. Some doctor came and kind of just took him away. Where did it say... Where did they say he... Did they say where? I tried to ask them, but they were too busy talking with Roe for me to interrupt. I heard them mention some kind of screen, a screening room, though all the doc told me was that. All I remember was there were some tests they still needed to go through with him. Oh, oh, they asked me if I wanted to go along, but I wanted to wait for you to come back, so. He sniffs the air and looks at the, it looks at the bag in my paws, his eyes lighting up. Yo, that smells amazing. I haven't eaten anything all morning. Do you mind if I have a looks like I have these for Roe, but since he's not here, I guess he can have one. Montai gets up and takes one of the sandwiches and starts happily bouncing away at it, his tail swinging from side to side. Hey, did you get the number eight from that one sandwich store? They're so good, dude. I have like ten of them the other day. Haha, <laughs> yeah. So, did you manage to find the new, to find the snow leopard? I'm guessing that's why you're here so early, right? No, I was trying to look for you earlier for something else, but it was just well chilling here. I don't know when he woke up, but he looked like he was gonna kill me when I walked in. And then we just started chatting about stuff until the doctor came. You know, stuff like this one time, I was walking climbing I was rock climbing, and I accidentally swung the cord around my neck. But why? But what about the snow leopard? Oh, yeah. You said you saw him yesterday. I was in the lobby talking with someone else, but I couldn't see who from where I was standing. Dude, I don't know. I tried shaking around the whole hospital for them, and I couldn't spot them. The closest guy I found that looked like a snow leopard was a really white cap with the facilities. I even tried asking the nice people at the front desk if any snow leopards were staying there, but they totally stonewalled me. I s you sure it was, it was them, dude? Maybe you saw that really white cat too. 100% sure. I've seen them twice already before. I don't know. I could forget their face if I wanted to at this point. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is a. Maybe this is like a sign that it's better if we don't see them again. What do you mean? Leo, that guy's dangerous. He wanted he wanted me to kill a dude. Look at us. 
we look really wet. I got beaten up, you were crippled or something. Not to mention your wolf foot. So, and he knows what we look like too. We're so done for. Yeah, speaking of your leg, did you say he was the one that caused all this that night, right? Something like that, but I don't really feel comfortable going over the details at the moment. Hey, that's fine, no pressure. You don't gotta tell me if you don't wanna, but I feel like we shouldn't look for the dude anymore if we can afford it, you know? I mean, you're not wrong. I saw my chin thinking of potential explanations for why the snow leopard would be here as Monty could soon to the last bite of the sandwich and sits back down. Does the snow leopard know we're here? Are we being targeted or followed? I set my head at the thought there's no way he could know where we are. Wait, so if you didn't find him, what do you what do you want to talk to me about? <laughs> Oh, what's so funny? I look over and see Monty, see Monty chuckling at something on his phone. Oh, he got a new phone. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I went out earlier and got a new phone since those jerks stole mine back at the power plant. You know, the guy at the mall gave me such a good deal, but they gave me a whopping 5% off. I'm so lucky. Uh, I don't think that's good, uh, never mind. Well, what were you laughing at? Dude, my phone just recommended me this news article, and like, we're here. And like, well, here, take a look for yourself. He passes me his phone, and I study the screen carefully. Man furious as trespassers dump bags of garbage on his yard. I set my head at the absurdity of the image provided. There's trash scattered virtually everywhere to the point you can't even see the ground anymore. I noticed Montai tried his best not to laugh as I looked back with a forced smile. Why does everyone hate the man? My eyes bounced to another hairline off on the side. My brows knit with curiosity. Power plant under investigation after a suspicious activity. And this was written yesterday afternoon, too. What's the matter? It's supposed to be funny. Literally, literally everyone hates the current mayor. Do you see how much trash was in his yard here? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. Do you see the article on the side? Huh? He peels over and grasps his head. Power plant. Wait, hey, it's the same one we went to. I can tell from the pictures they have. So the police are finally investigating, huh? That's new to me, but that's good to hear, I guess. But this doesn't make any sense. It's been days since they left, you know. Why now? Hey, you know, the cops around here kind of suck. Like they, they like can't even give people proper speeding tickets, and I would know from experience. Better never than late. I took out Montage, step up, and decide not to correct him, but I immediately sprung. But it immediately springs a thought into my mind. And the police never do anything. So why do this investigation so late? So why do this investigation so late now? So what Javier said about a gang wasn't it, was it after all? Are the police somehow involved? How did they even know? I scrolled through the article, but it doesn't miss anything else that might that might look useful. Oh, a notification. Monty grabs his phone back, tapping on the screen with a frown. Boo, another work email. And here, and I'm here, I thought my delivery front of wife. And I hear I thought my delivery a wife. Yeah, that's right. Why are you still here? You're practically fine now. The doctors are kind of freaked out about my heart condition, so they want to triple check some stuff or something. They also said they found some small amounts of some kind of chemical in my body, but as you probably know by now, I'm not the smartest when it comes to this kind of stuff. Also, the dog kept calling me cute, so I couldn't really focus. What? Cute? You mean I cute? <laughs> not you too. What? I mean... Never mind. 
Mm, speaking of which, I wonder what kind of tests they're performing well. Hey, Machai, do you know what which direction they went or where? The doctor, I don't know. They walked his bill off down the hall towards the elevators. Oh, yo, I remember the doc mentioned something about x raying Well, crazy stuff, you know? Like, can you believe they just suit particles in your body? Isn't that basically a bullet? Isn't that basically like a bullet? X-rays, I wonder where they do those in the hospital. Yeah, I got my X-rays done earlier this week. I know where it is. But surely it's not the same place, right? The boy swells his, his mouth. I don't know, maybe. Do you want to go on an adventure like Search for Well? Yeah. Well, I'm inviting myself along then. There's nothing to do here, dude. It's like watching paint fly. Dry. What'd I say? Never mind. So does that mean I'm tag along? Sure thing, I don't mind. I'm actually glad that Montag is coming along. I could use his company. Hooray. In that case, I think we gotta go up to the, uh, knife floor. Alright, then. Lead the way. Okay, ta-da, we're here. We step out of the elevator with Marte, with Marte immediately rushing over to the four players mounted on the wall. Hey, I recognize these long rectangular rooms. I was totally here the other day. The boy studies a map some more before turning around to me, his eyes beaming with excitement. I think we go that way, or was it that way? He hesitates for a second before pointing down the hall on the opposite end. Is that where they do the x-rays? I think so, but we'll find well eventually, you know? Process of stimulation. You mean process of... Hey, what up? I can't... I still can't walk that fast. I managed to catch up to Monty. He's waiting for me patiently around the corner. Oops. I forgot about your injury. I don't know where Took a look at these wounds here, and I don't think Roe is in any one of them. Oh, you see we got the right floor? I swear on my life, there's no doubt about it. Wait, I take that back, I'm not sure. I let out a groan, and Martin nudges me on, the, on my shoulder. Hey, I found it. He's in that room, I just know it. He points to a door sign next to two large steel doors. Scanning home. You're just guessing, aren't you? <laughs> Not completely. I guess it's worth a shot. We enter the hall, which looks no different from the rest of the floor. We don't even know which room to go into. Maybe we should ask the staff for help. Mother layouts at me, nervously looking around for any staff. No problem. I got us into this mess and I'm going to get us out. Look, that door's open. Let's go in and see if we can ask anybody for help. He leads the way knocking on the door before poking his head in. Hello. Any staff inside? Oh. A slender looking tiger sits by the corner, watching us carefully as Monty surveys the room. There's no one here besides her. Hi there. State your affiliation. Who sent you to? Huh? Sorry, miss. What do you mean? I already told you people, I'm currently not accepting interviews at this time. I would kindly request all journalists and reporters to attend the meeting later this week. Journalists, oh no, we're not any of that. I glance over at Monty, nodding up and down with a dumb smile on his face. So he must have gotten the wrong room. I tug on Monty's shirt, cueing him to leave, but he doesn't budge. Hey, wait a second. You're that tiger lady that's wanting for mayor, right? What was your name again? Uh, don't tell me. Door. No. To... It's Diana. Diana Sigger. Yeah, that's it. It's Diana. Holy smokes, I'm a big fan. You absolutely destroyed the preliminaries of your debate and speech. You know, all my friends have been talking about you. I really hope you win. Thank you. What did you say again during your interviews? The city needs action, not a clown leading charge. 
I never expected to see Monty fanboy this hard, especially not one, especially not over someone running for mail. That's correct. Wait, what's someone like you doing at a place like this? You give Monty a look, as I'm taken aback by his bluntness. We really shouldn't be asking her, be asking her that. It's probably something personal. Yeah, oops, you're right. Sorry about all this. We'll be on our way now. It's quite alright. It's nothing compared to the questions the media has been barging me with. It's just a checkup on my health. You're not sick, are you? Who's gonna kick Castleton's ass if you're stepping down? I don't plan on stepping down that easily. That being said, I hope I can get your support for the upcoming elections later this month. You bet you're the only candidate that cares about the people. Kind of makes me, kind of makes you think what the hell is going on with our government. Fantastic. That case locks on the mind. Expected some kind of response from me as well. Oh, I'm just visiting. I'm not from here, but I hope your campaigns go well. I uh, heard about how like the current mayor is by several people already. Yes, isn't he just a wonderful leader? I'd rather not speak about his current impacts, but I do think the current leadership is good for one thing. Oh? His ability to unite the city through his idiocy. Monday suddenly burst into laughter, with Diana and I staring at him, waiting for him to collect his composer. Anyway, I'd love to continue this chat, but I need to make an important phone call. Alright, sorry to disturb you. Nonsense, it's always a pleasure to converse and hear what the community is thinking. I believe that's what makes a good leader, wouldn't you agree? The boy nods his head in further agreement. Yep. We're saying short goodbyes and Monty tugs at my sleeves as soon as we're back in the hallway. Dude, can't believe we met Diana of all people. Like, what are our chances? I can't believe it either. Maybe you, maybe you're just lucky with this kind of stuff. Sounds like she's popular with the people. Yeah, you know it. She kind of just came out of nowhere, but we're all glad she's trying to make change. What kind of changes? Well, first off, the change, first off, the fact that she wants to kick Castleton out of the office is already crazy. You know, no one, no one's been able to come close in the past few years because of some stupid companies funding and lobbying. But somehow, man. Diana's got even more support in minutes to win some of Castleton's supporters over. Huh, I guess that would do it. She's going to invest in improving the self-sustainability of the city and give us money back. What does that mean? Honestly, I kind of forgot, but all, but all I know is she's projected to win. Hmm, it does make me think, though. Well, about why she's here. No one would be taking x-rays for just a normal checkup. Usually it's just a blood test or something, right? Right, you're right. I don't know. Maybe she's getting special treatment because she's a politician, right? She didn't look sick to me. Hmm. Maybe that could be it. But back to finding row. Well. I already ahead of you on that dude. Wait, what are you planning on doing? He makes a man sprint down the hallway, peering into every single door he passes by. Any staff around? Hello? Ah, I have a bad cramp and I need medical attention. I'm regretting this already. I'm going to die from secondhand embarrassment. Thankfully, a staff member shows up almost immediately. I don't think they're impressed with my Monty's performance. It takes me a bit to walk over with the staff leaving as soon as I with, this, with the staff leaving as soon as I'm with an ear shot. Well, what did they say? Uh, they told me to study or I'll be kicked out. Whoops. And also, we're on the wrong floor too. Double whoops. They said they do mainly blood tests and MRIs here. But I thought you said this was the floor they did the x-rays. It is. I got my x-rays on this floor. Or was it the one below? Hey, I don't, 
Hey man, I don't know. The hospital looks like looks all the same to me. It's all the same every the rest I look. I can't be upset at him with his pleading eyes like that, especially since I'm not a fan of hospitals either. Yeah, you're right. It does, doesn't it? I glance around in the hostile colors and smell start to trigger the uneasy feeling I've been trying to suppress. Okay, let's just go downstairs. Okay, let's just go downstairs. Hey, you know, this this was the floor where I got my x-rays done. You sure this time, right? Hmm. One million percent. Your friend's doing the same scans as I did. He's probably around the corner in that hallway there. The boy leads the way, and my mind begins to wonder as I do my best to follow. He was hoping Rose okay. Well, here we are. He motions to a set of doors that look the same as any other on this floor. I take a peek through the glass and notice it's a sort of waiting room. We make our way in and I believe a beeline and I make a ble a beeline towards the receptionist, a tall elk working the counter. Hi, I was wondering if Take it down my be seated. I glance at the ticketing machine. The elk is pointing at his face, still glued to the monitor. I don't know, I'm not impatient here, I'm just wondering if someone I knew. I said take a number and be seated. Okay. Oh, uh, yo, what's going on? We need a ticket now? Yeah, but we're not even patients here. Why do we need a number? Let me handle this, I gotcha. The boy starts his pause on the counter and peers over the counter directly at the monitor the elk is looking at. Hey, do you know if there's a wolf named uh, Ro? A wolf named Ro currently getting x-rayed or something. The elk ignores Monty's inquiry and gets to his type away on the, the computer. Hey, you're not even doing any work. You're looking at a bunch of silly graphs and numbers. Sir, please be seated. Hey, how did you make that little lines up so high in that red graph. Sir, if you don't cooperate, I'm going to have to call security and escort you men out. Yeah, well, I'm going to be telling you, I got to be telling your man, sir, he'll play with lines instead of working in. I practically have to yank on, on Monty's belt to pull him back over the counter as he starts to rumble on with the staff. Excuse me, what seems to be the problem here? I look over and see a cowardly doctor clad and Chris White coat his gaze studying us carefully. Is there a row here currently getting x ray Also, your buddy's playing on the computer instead of working. The doctor looks at Monty confused before he nods back at me. Yes, there is a row here. In fact, I was just finishing up his scans. Oh, how is he? Can we visit him with his friends? No, I'm afraid not at this moment. His lower spine has been misaligned and several of his bones and ribs have been shattered, as well as a damaged liver and right lung. There's also several bullets still lost in his upper, his lower upper torso that we need to remove. Oh god, that's awful. But that's not all bad. Luckily, most of the bullets seem to have missed his vitals by a hair. Though, it seems like he has developed an acute case of retrograde, retrograde amnesia. This is probably due to the blood loss he suffered but his condition, although not that threatening, needs to be properly treated, so we'll be moving him to the other building for surgery and proper treatment. It's truly a miracle that he's alive. He should be able to make a full recovery within time, but the Anisa could take a definite amount of time. Now, if you'll excuse me, the Kyoji nods at the two of us before disappearing into another door down the hall. I feel a gentle pair on my shoulder. Hey man, it'll be okay. You're the doc, he'll be okay. Everything's fine. Yeah. No, no it isn't. Everything's not fine. I slowly make my way out of the waiting area and back into the hallway. I can hear Monty following behind me. W what Why not? They said he'll make a full recovery. Yeah, but he's got amnesia now. Oh, is that why he was acting so weird earlier? 
that will explain it. It's still been me. Man, you. What are you saying, dude? I didn't tell you the full truth. It's more complicated than just a snow leopard. I think we were being targeted by someone else. Really? It must be. It happened so quick that... But they suddenly stopped the car, shot at us, and then drove away. We were following after that snow leopard. But the thing that bothers me the most is that the alleyway we were in wasn't connected to anything important. It's as if they knew exactly where we were, and it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Wait, wait, you mentioned... You didn't mention that to me. So the drive-by was caused by someone else? Yeah, and I think they were talking to Snow Leopard. That's why I wanted to, wanted you to look for them for answers. So I didn't feel comfortable mentioning that. So then, what now? You're not thinking of doing something crazy, are you? I think. I clasped my fist tightly and stared at Monty, my emotions and mixed with terror and anger. I want to figure out who did this. For everyone's sake, especially Ro. This is the least I can do. Ro, are you gonna do this all alone? Probably not. Outside at how ambi ambitious my plan is, I'm not even going to be around for much longer. How am I supposed to help when I'm back home? I will offer to help, but I really don't but I don't really know how useful I'd be, man. It seems so dangerous dude. But I'm also kind of curious about who could be behind all this. What are those people who saw you guys were after the Snow Leopard? Then you think they're at the blackout because Snowy was, was your leader or something, right? That's a possibility. Yo, that's so suspect. I wish I was better at figuring out this kind of stuff. I don't even know where to start. Hey, that's right. Wasn't there a tiny little fox boy following you guys before? He looked so smart with his glasses. Where is he? Oh, hell yeah. I only saw him briefly after we arrived at the hospital. He couldn't stay long, especially not when he heard what happened to Ro. Yeah, I was going to start with meeting up with Javier. If anyone can figure things out, it has to be him. Yeah, I think I'm feeling well enough to be discharged later this afternoon. So I think I'll head over to Javier's place. I've been so out of the loop for the past couple of days. Right, yo, do you mind if I tag along as well? There's like some stuff I wanted to ask the Fox too. Oh, you know how you guys gave me a business card? Well, I was gonna call it, but it kind of just disappeared. I think I lost it. Whoops. Yeah, sure, I don't see why not. Great. I kind of want to pick his boy about Blackout and the truck I saw. Truck? Yeah, did you guys see it? Did you guys see it when you were at the power plant? There was like this huge long 18 wheeler that people were throwing stuff in, like it was the end of the world when I got there. Wait, we didn't see anything like that. You're just remembering this now? The boy seriously nods back. Well, I wanted to tell you about it earlier, but you weren't in the mood to hear it. Oh, uh, right. Do you remember what kind of stuff they were loading in? It looked like heavy equipment and a bunch of huge cardboard boxes. There was like this dude that accidentally dropped one of the boxes and then Snowy went feral and snapped at him. Huh. I don't know, man, but yeah. Let's head over to the Fox's place later. I'm kind of sick and tired of the hospital air anyway. You sure? Didn't you say the doctors wanted to check over some stuff with you? Yeah, but it's not like I'll be gone for the whole day. I'll be back before they know I'm even gone. Well, if you say so, I guess I wouldn't mind having some company with me. Way. Oof. Without warning, he envelops me in his strong embrace, pulling me close against his broad chest. I blush as I realize just how warm his body is against mine. Yo, know, if, we, if we're going gonna be out, I need to get my stuff. I'll meet you at the lobby in an hour. Sure, see you then. The boy disappears from sight, leaving me ruling in my thoughts. I let out a sigh, my mind wandering back to the night 
of the incident, Lawrence. I'm glad he showed up when he did, but what the hell was he thinking just ditching us like that? Thinking back to how Rose been describing Lawrence, there's a small part of me that's suddenly suspicious of him. It's too untimely for him to just show up like that. Maybe he's involved somehow. But then again, he had no reason to save us if that's true. Regardless, I have some, some questions lined up for him. And then there's Javier. I hope he's pieced things together in these past few days. No, no idea how it went with madness, but he looked so frantic when he came to visit. But I'm glad he managed to tell me his address before he left. I stared at the ground with Paul's cleansing tightly. I don't know what's been happening these past few days, but I'm going to get answers one way or another. I'm going to figure this whole thing out if it's the last thing I do for him. So, well, has amnesia, and he has no idea who Theodore or who he is himself. He has no idea that he's a private investigator. He knows nothing about Theodore and nothing about Monty. He, uh, he really just don't know anything about himself or any thing that he's done recently. Now apparently not all of his memories disappeared. He didn't lose all of his memories because he still remembers himself being in medical school. And Roe in the past said that he went to medical school that stuff that he originally wanted to do. So he still does have his memories in medical school and that he never cared about you know like and then he said that you know like right after he got amnesia he said that he never cared about being a private investigator so he certainly did not lose all his memories Could some of those memories come back gradually. But again, the doctor told Theodore and Monty that it's basically the the, the, um, the amnesia is I, I forgot the word the doctor said, but I think it's like permanent or maybe it's gonna be long. It's gonna be there for a long time. Like he's gonna have a niece for a long time. So I don't know. I mean, they weren't expecting Roe to live, but he ended up living. So I don't know. Maybe Roe will gradually get back all his memories eventually, even that if that takes years. So um, yeah. So that's kind of sad that. He doesn't remember Theodore. It's as if the two of them never met. Like everything that they've done the past couple of days never happened. So um Who exactly is Declan? I mean Declan, um Well remember somebody's name and their name was Declan and that he remembered them being a tiger vaguely like Theodore now Theodore was in the cafeteria getting something to eat for or getting something some food for Roe and this tiger guy was behind him and he was very difficult kind of like a jerk and just rude you know, it's kind of like 
giving Theodore money. When the way the card system or electronic something didn't work, so Theodore still brought some cash with him. I mean, apparently he thinks that people don't use cash no more, but he still brought some cash anyway in case something like that happens. Like if the electronic system went down. So anyway, that tiger that gave Theodore a difficult time. Could that have been Declan? I mean, Declan? Could that have been the person he was, what was talking about? Because he, the way he's dressed, he looks like he's dressed fancy, like almost kind of like a witch. So could he be a, I think he's might be like a hospital worker. He might work in the hospital. He has a fancy job or a higher level job in the hospital. If that is, but again, if that is even true, maybe he's talking about a different tiger, and maybe not that tiger that Theodore dealt with in the cafeteria. Maybe he's talking about maybe what was talking about a different tiger, but again, it could have been him. So, we're on um, Theodore's, I mean, we're on Javier's route right now. So, I guess Theodore's got to have more time with Javier. And the two of them will, I don't know what's going to happen from this point on between the two of them, I guess. I don't know if they're going to continue with the mystery or if they're going to focus on well getting better or I have no idea but anyway um looks like well may possibly be out of the picture for now and the story f focuses on on um, Javier and Theodore now once well gets his own route could something like this happen to Javier, could he get amnesia? He could he get hurt or something like that? He gets amnesia or maybe something else will happen to him or maybe like maybe he might have some kind of Aaron to go to and Javier might have to maybe Javier has some Aaron to go to and it might be days or even weeks until he comes back and while he's gone, the story focuses on Theodore and Ro. Just wondering how how the story could be, what could possibly happen to Javier and Rosewood. So, we'll continue with Rain Check next time, so thank you all very much for watching. Bye.